and who lived in Henry Street and where the families come from and where did they go to. Uh, there are very few good photographs of Henry Street. If anybody has better ones than I have, could you have me? This, of course, is the aerial photograph taken in the 1940s, and you get an idea of the street, but you're not getting a great detail on any of the houses. Now, one of the things is, as you go up Henry Street, uh, you know, that's Shoe City Store, or whatever it is on, on that side of the street. But if you look in at the back, to the old Petticoat Lane, Look at the lovely building in there. Yes. Fabulous big building. And a fabulous set of buildings that still stand in the old Petticoat Lane at the back of Henry Street. Um, right? Now, this is the original Henry Street. It was built in 1793. And Lord Blaney decided we'd have to set the street. He got the Henrys. And they matched out all the different properties. And then they rented the properties out to people. And then the people who got the properties would build a house maybe for themselves and maybe build two or three more houses on their own little site and they would rent out then subways the, the other houses. And about seven or eight people had the whole of Henry Street more or less to themselves. Uh, I've colour coded it, and the colours have come out there okay. Here at the corner at this side was owned by a man called John Kernahan. And John Kernahan was given Frank Barker's house are here. He was given the house on the corner. He was given what is Beatty's garden today, but there was a house there as well. He was given Margie Hughes's house, and he was given the gateway above Margie Hughes's as well. And he had the land going back, he had the properties and all the buildings going back. And he owned a pub. And he put a pub here at the corner of Henry Street in the square, and was a big businessman in the town here for quite a number of years. Living himself, now the corner house was, was one house, not two as it is there in 1901. And he lived in the house, he ran a pub, he rented out the other two houses, so the other three houses that he had on his property, and he made money and he was a good businessman. He eventually died and his widow lived up in Church Street until she died. His name was Kernahan. I don't know where he was from or if there are any Kernahans left in the area, really, to him or not, but he was Kernahan. If you go to the one above that, you'll see. It was owned by a man called Niblock, right? And this is Comiskey's, you know, the big Cusick's pub, which eventually became Comiskey's. And Niblock went bankrupt in 1803, and he had to sell the properties. And eventually a man called Joseph Comiskey buys it. And we, of course, all remember the Comiskey's were still there in the 1970s, related, of course, to uh, Kevin and to the bishop and so on. Uh, and they owned the property. There were only two houses on it in this map. There were originally three. And of course, there was a furnace, a forge at the back of it. And it, it was always a big fire flaming in it. And Comiskey did hardware and did leather and did all that sort of stuff. And he rented the other house out above him. Uh, right? The next house belonged to somebody called Brannigan. And they built three houses. And the gateway, and that's up where Tom Haggerty lived. Right, those there were three houses there, and then there's a gateway. Is that Jenny Connors' gateway with the statue in it? It is. And anyway, he went up that street, and he built three houses. Probably lived in one and rented out two more. You now go to the next site, which would be where Paddy Connors, Bridget Connor lived. That those four houses. There were four houses built there. One a bit bigger than the other three, and again, rent now, live in one, rent out the others. And then further up, sorry, a man called Walsh owned that property. Is McDonald here, and McDonald was a grocer. And he had a shop at the top of Henry Street on this side, near the top of McGinn's, uh, Kiwi Doherty's, that area. And he owned the property, and the McDonald's were in town for quite a while afterwards and had his grocery shop there. And these people are trying to start businesses. Comiskey doing the hardware, Kernan is a pub at the bottom. Uh, this one is a grocer shop. Probably Walsh and Brannigan had either pubs or shops of some sort. Didn't come off as a proper commercial premises. The ones at the top of the street, I don't know, I haven't found the lease of those yet. Now if you come down this side, Terry Duffy lives at the top of the street on this side, up at the clinic side. We'll call it that. And there are three houses there, as there is today. And 
although I haven't found the lease on it, it belonged and was given to a solicitor called John Bailey. And eventually it went to John G. Reed, eventually it went to my granduncle James E. Burns, and went to my father at one stage. And uh, that was that property. The next one is two houses. Then you've got a small one here with a man called MacDonald who had a pub. And he was a brother of the MacDonald by <coughs> on the other side of the street who was the grocer. So both of them have nice businesses here in Henry Street and trying to get a bit of money. We come down and have a Murphy. Uh, not sure what he worked at. Thomas Craven has two houses here, lives in one, rents out the other. And then we have Stuart. And Stuart was a cobbler, shoemaker. So he's got a wee cobbler shop, a shoe shop, on that side of the street. Now, from there on down, all the ones that I've shaded brown, does it look brown? It does. This one, which is Shoe City. This one, which is Leo Gallagher's, is that the next one, as you come down? Uh, then Jerry Connor's house. Then the gateway. And then three more shops on around the corner, Tommy Kelly's. Uh, sorry, the Davy Stewart's shop and Larry Dunney's shop is there. And then Tommy Kelly's round to the corner. All of that was the linen market. And all of that belonged to the linen market. And that's where the store of the linen cloths is that came into town. And the buy in the middle, McKee, George McKee, the yellow one, he's in the middle. He's the linen master. And he also has a pub in that house. So he's making money on the pub, and he's making money every time someone goes in to get a linen measure, he charges them a halfpenny or whatever it is. Originally, McKee and the linen market was up in the commons where you charge the electric cars. And he, there were two things there there was a building where they stored the linen cloth, and George McKee had a pub. And he had his pub up there, and he ran the linen market. And then when they built Henry Street, he came down here and put his pub into what is Leo. Gallagher's house and he had his pub there and then the rest of it is where people came in or great great grandfathers came in with their linen cloth and it was all stored and the whole bag of it. Now one thing to notice is look at the backs of the gardens. The ones on this side are all limited by the same line. Okay? You go back a distance and then there was a field there before you got to the wall of the garden. There was a big open field in at the back there. I don't know who owned it or who it belonged to or why. But on this side, you see the old Petticoat Lane mm -hmm. is here. And all of these buildings here all face, shall we say it, the wrong way. Mm -hmm. They face into the old street. And the old street comes in here at Mrs. Hughes's uh, gateway. And it's still there. It goes the whole way up to here. Now, you can't get the whole way to the top of it. Um, there's a few blockages on it. But that is the original Petticoat Lane, not Henry Street. Okay. Are these doors or those houses lived in? Or no. Uh, some of them would be houses. I think there were shops, maybe some of them. Or and some of these. Today, mm -hmm. most of them have fallen down. And, fallen down. Oh, yeah. The, the couple of big ones are still reasonably solid. Mm -hmm. And I presume, I don't know who owns them. I don't know. And. I'm not getting into a problem because Tavies are on one side, Mrs. Hughes, and Comiskeys are on the other side. But I think the road is neutral, right? In the same way that the road out here doesn't belong to anybody. It belongs to the urban council. Or I don't know. I would not get involved in who owns that, <laughs> that property. You do not want to get into a, a dispute. Now, the man who started the linen market on the corner was called Walter Steele. And he was a big farmer who lived in in a scheme where McNello's pub is. And he had huge farms out there and he came to Castle Bay to invest money in the linen market and uh, make his money over here, right? And in 1803 he decided to sell the linen market and he sold it to a man called Arthur Hamill. Now when you go across from Cullerville village, go up to Cullerville, turn right, go down, you know the bridge at Carinchico? That on the maps of 1790 is Arthur Hamill's bridge. And I think the mill at Corinthian was owned by this man, Arthur Hamill. So he's a big businessman. He's going to make money on the linen market. So he buys the rights to the linen market from the steels. The steels start at the linen market, but Hamill comes. And all of these people here, well, most of them anyway, are living in all those houses on the far side of Henry Street and are working, measuring the linen cloths and doing the whole work for, for, for Hamill. 
and there's a Robert Ross and a James Graham and a uh, Alex McKay, Sarah, Sarah McKay, I assume is a daughter of George's, uh, Owen McEnany, Thomas Semple, Charles McAlerney, and so on and so forth, all of these people, they're in the Orlatry collection of houses, and they're associated with the, with the linen market. This, of course, is, as we call it, the street. You see Marjorie Hughes' house there at the gateway. But you can see on the extreme left that there was a two-story house here, which was John Cannon's pub. Now, that's Beatty's Garden today, and it's fallen down there in the 1950s. You then have Cusick's pub above that again. And these are one of some of the very few photographs I have uh, of houses in Henry Street. The man, of course, here is Eddie Murphy. Yeah. I'm not sure who the children are. Maybe you know, somebody knows Marge's it. Granny. Marge's granny and grandfather are there, yes. I don't know who the wee girls are. There's a girl there in a convent uniform, obviously. Between Marge and Josie. Yeah, something like that. Uh, and there aren't that many good photographs. This is the other one from the Corpus Christi procession, taken from the other side, and it gives you a sense of how steep Henry Street is. Uh, it falls away very rapidly. You have the three houses on one side, John Bailey's houses, and then you have the other ones. Now, what's very interesting about Henry Street is, for some reason, after a while, this is about 1840, they start building tiny little houses up the far side of Henry Street. Right? What originally were shops owned by McDonald and Craven and so on. And if you actually count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 15, 16, 17, 18. Between the Shoe City store and Terry Duffers at the top, there's 18 houses. And there's not a gateway to be seen. Right? And this caused terrible trouble with the health authorities in the town because they had no access to their backyards. So out the backyard they had, I don't want to say too much with this, a human, toilet, a human toilet. They might have kept chickens and pigs in it. They had rubbish. And the only way they could get all the crop out from their backyards was to take it through the houses out to the street. And there's complaints constantly of them having to carry the stuff through their houses because they had no access to their backyards and had no there's no entryways in fact the whole of the far side of henry street had only one entryway and that's beside the shop here at the bottom the other side i think maybe had six five or six entryways so everybody had a, a means of getting around the back of their houses the house that uh, tom Haggerty lived in or the house that was there was owned by the revenue constables and the revenue constables, this is their uniform, doesn't he look well? <laughs> and they were in here, they were a constabulary, but they weren't a police constabulary, they were a revenue constabulary, what we today would call either the customs men tax or taxmen. <laughs> and their job was to collect taxes in the town. Some people in the town, of course, would be distilling whiskey to sell in the shops and you'd pay the bond and the whiskey and uh, people were importing stuff into the town. And these were the men who went round to make sure you paid your taxes. And there were five or six constables that lived appropriately enough in Tom Hegarty's house. And then when, when you weren't paying your taxes, these boys would come out and uh, uh, bailiffs or whatever you had to call them. And we had a constabulary barracks in the town where Waters Restaurant is today. We then had a constabulary Bridewell, that's a prison further up York Street. And then we had a, a revenue tax constables here in Henry Street, keeping an eye on us as well. The British were great people for keeping lists and collecting taxes. They could do it better than anybody could. And then you look at Henry Street and Henry Street starts to develop. These are the people who lived in Henry Street and I don't know, some of the names were part of the older ones. This is from Tommy Kelly's corner, number one, Bernard Ward. He was in the corner house here, up the far side of Henry Street. Ward, Miller, Brannigan, Keown, another Brannigan, Connolly, Campbell, Boylan, Farrell. Now, the Farrells and the Connors are not natives to the town. And I'm assuming the Farrells came from, say, Longford or somewhere over that direction. and came maybe as file dealers. Once the railway comes, more and more people begin to come into towns, and uh, John Farrell is possibly the first of the Farrells to come to the town. I'm not sure. The, the Connors come later as tinsmiths, 
uh, they're not in, there's no Connors in, in, in Henry Street at this stage. Uh, and then when you go over the other side of the street, okay, the last name lived in Beatty's here at the corner and had a pub, and his name was James Kirk, right, office commanding the USS Enterprise. Uh, James Kirk. The house, the third name of Arthur Christie lived in Marjorie Hughes's house. And then Joseph Comiskey. The Comiskeys are here as early as 1850. And our room is hardware and his furnace up at Cusick's pub there. And the Comiskeys have about four properties the whole way up that side of Henry Street. And there's a Miller and a Finley and a McLarney and a Carraher near the top, Patrick Carraher, and another Comiskey. And that's the whole way up this side of the street. Uh, one of the trades in Henry Street, now there were other trades, there were tailors, the Callahans were tailors, uh, there are different ones, but of course tinsmiths, and in particular the Whites and the Connors were all tinsmiths. And this is an example of them selling their tinwares on a market day outside the central supermarket over in the main street there. And I must say, tin is still a lovely metal, much nicer than aluminium. And this photograph of a football team was taken at the back of um, one of the houses on this side of Henry Street. It's not Grant's. It's either one of the two-story houses above that, Connors, or... Uh, now, I don't know why they took the football team into the back of the houses to take the <laughs> photograph, but they took them in <laughs> anyway. Like the Most of you reckon... Which one do you think it is? At the back of... Um Thomas Street, then we have... No, no, no. no. It's he definitely Henry Street. My father said it was Henry Street. They so went in. It's either McGinn's or it's uh, that side. It's one of those two-story houses on this side of Henry Street. Uh, most of the ones you know, the one that always pulls me is, who's the, wee, who's the woman looking at the window on the top right, left-hand corner of the picture? I don't know who that is. And most of you know these people. Uh, that's Billy Mason, Farrell, Pat Murphy, the voucher, Jimmy Hannerty, the bookie, Pat Hughes, my father, Paddy Roach, yeah. Eddie O'Connor, yeah. uh, Christy Fisher, yeah. and so on. Uh, it's a whole pack. I don't know. Uh, yes. Someone who can name me some of them, I'll get a list. I have most of them, <coughs> and I get confused with the Farrells. I get confused with the Farrells. <coughs> now, to come and look at, at the names of the people who live in the houses. Uh, sorry, this is the 1901 census, and it still surprises me. You can all see this, can you? Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, it's not on on there. And it surprises me how many people <coughs> I don't know. And it's only 1900. You know, you think to yourself, as I said earlier, where are the Grants? Where are the Redmonds? Yeah. They're not on it. Now, this first house here, on McKenna, is the first house on the far side of the street. Where McCardles lived. McCardles aren't in it in 1901, okay? Now, when you come down to house number two, you see Tommy Sherry. And Tommy Sherry was named as a great footballer and he played for the Casablanca Gladstonians in a match against Clontibret out in Packy Burns's field out at Corinthia at the Cromartin Road in 1885. And a wee boy was at the game, James Murphy who was later the Dole Man in York Street. And he eventually, in his later years, wrote a report of the football match. And the two footballers he mentions, who were great Blaney footballers in the 1880s, was Tommy Sherry from Henry Street and a man called Tommy Ralph. And I think Tommy Ralph was an orphan lad from Artean who worked in one of the bakeries in the main street. And he, he mentions them and he talks about the match and the boy getting a dunder at the match and put into the drain and they had to stop the match when they pulled the boy out of the drain. It was a bit of a primitive football match. But that's Tommy Sherry. This is Margaret Carlton. Do you remember? Who I think is Maggie Ballatrain. Would that be right? Someone may, may be able to tell me that. James Woods, Alice Maguire, Frank Murray. No. This is the Hughes's. These are the sculptures. And Thomas Hughes is here, and of course his wife is the woman who is known as Big Nancy. Right? Yes. That's Big Nancy, living on the far side of Henry Street. And she's got children, Margaret, Patrick, John, Mary Ann, Alice, Alice, Francis, Bridget, Thomas, Christopher. There's a rake of children here. Right? And uh, Thomas Hughes is a plate layer with the GNR Railway. Right? He's not a tinsmith. Now, 
I'm assuming they're the Scotch, Scotch users. It must be the same connection anyway in, in the street. You come on down and you see a MacIntaggart. Yes, I right. remember him. Yes. Uh, Valley. I don't know what he is. Sorry, I made this mistake there. Uh, Brannigan, who had a wee shop further up the street. And then down to house number 15, which is Leo, uh, what do you call him, Leo uh, Gallagher's. And look at how many people are in this house. Arthur Keenan, Bridget Keenan, his wife, Bernard McCoy, John Mullen, Henry McMahon, Joseph McMahon, four Beatties, not the Beatties from our corner, different Beatties, Hamilton, a boy called Trey, a more agricultural labourer, a printer, and then a whole family of McNallys at the bottom of this list. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 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 you know, poor people wandering the countryside. And they went to Arthur and they give me a apron and they could lie on the bed for the night. Now, it's not a hotel. There's no food. It's not a bed and breakfast. You lay on the floor and that's where all you get. It's a DOS house. It's a DOS house, they call it. Where people just came as cheap as you could possibly get. You're covered for the night and that's it. And you wander away somewhere else. And he ran the DOS house there for years. You'll notice most of them are agricultural labourers. Right. I was a good fellow and he was blind. Yeah. Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> and there's all sorts of people in it. Then you come down, of course, to MacDonald, who was a retired uh, sergeant in the RIC. He's in what is uh, Jerry Connor's house. Then Henderson's had the shop, which later became was Davy Stewart's shop. Uh, and then on the corner is John Barker. And interesting about this man, Barker, it's not meant to do with Frank Barker, I don't know who he was, but he's a pensioner in the US Army. And given his age, he probably fought in the American Civil War, right? And I know nothing about him, I haven't found out anything about Barker. I'd like to know a bit about him and what's he doing in the corner house over here at the bottom of Henry Street. Now, go up the other side, on the corner, you have John White. And the Whites, yeah, yeah. Uh, we know the Whites. And the White, of course, is a tinsmith. Yeah. And then the next is Jimmy Brooks, that's Marge's grandfather, and he was a butcher. Sylvester McGinn is in the pub, Cusick's pub. Patrick Connor is a tinsmith. Mm -hmm. uh, go on down, we're still going up the street here. James McCarroll is a failure. Owen Connor is a tinsmith. Uh, William Irwin, right? Is the Irwins. Now he's spelling with a V there, but that's mm. Robert Irwin, that's the same connection. This boy Richard Anderson is an ex RAC constable, and after this, he got a job as the gardener here on the estate, and he lived in the annex. He was the, the gardener in our gardens here. And then you go down, you see Anne Duffy. Patrick Connor is another tinsmith. There's a wake of these, they must all be brothers, and I assume the Connors came from, I don't know, Leash, off <coughs> the country, and they come as tinsmiths, and they're in Henry Street. And most of those we don't know, right? Mm. Now, Margie's house, uh, Jimmy Brooks, the butcher, have a young girl living in there called Faulkner. Here she's here, Sarah Faulkner. And Sarah Faulkner, the Faulkners own the pub next door to Margie's, Cusick's pub. And her mother fell down the stairs one day and broke her neck and was killed. And the father then left, and there was just the one child, Sarah, and the, the Hugheses raised this girl uh, for a long time as, as, as an orphan, as an orphan, Margie's family raised her as an orphan in the house. Um, now, my father and the Northern Standard wrote a list of people who lived in the houses, and this will be a generation later, say the 1940s. Some of these, Louis White, do you remember Louis White? No? Jimmy Brooks, Paddy Cusack in the pub, Paddy Connor, Katie Irwin, and Hugh Grant has now appeared as Faley's father. Yes. Pete Connor, Tinsmith, Sprigger Garland, the foul dealer, Barney Connor, we're going up this side of the street. Paddy Redmond is now here, he's a cobbler. 
And then the last house on this side of Henry Street at the top was Tail Legs Mulligan. Right? And Tail Legs was the bill poster. And when a circus would come to town with their posters, Tail Legs would come out with his bucket of paste. Oh, and he paste up all the posters to say there's a circus yeah. on tonight and there's this, that and the other. Uh, on the other side of the street, the first house then is Big Mick McCarthy, right? Yeah. What year was that? That's 1939, approximately. Tom Sherry is still there, Bobby Irwin, and you come on down, you still have the same, uh, I think there's a mistake, Cassie Coates will be, should be further. Nancy is there, Mrs. Henderson, and Davy Stewart by 1940. Vincent Callahan, the Callahans were tailors uh, in Henry Street. And a number of, there's a lot of others now, but a lot of these, some of the records, it could be somebody who was just in the house for a night. They're not necessarily. No. What record is that? Tell Sorry? Us. What record is that? Is that That's the Northern record? Standard. The Northern Standard did a list of all the oh, households 39. in 1939 <laughs> as a centenary celebration of the standard. Now, what makes it interesting is when I went to look at the ground rents, none of the people who lived in Henry Street actually owned their own houses, and none of them even owned the ground rent on the houses. And all the people who owned Henry Street when it was sold by the Hope Estate eventually in 1954 were strange names. Margaret Brannigan. I remember way back in 1793, there was a Brannigan got houses in Henry Street. And in 1954, they still appear to own the ground rent. Warnock, Joseph Comiskey, we know the Comiskeys. Trimble, another strange one. Another Brannigan. David Clements has houses in Henry Street. Now, David Clements had a grocery shop where Terry Conley had the grocery shop. There's a Miller, Lougheed, right? Edward McCarthy was a big. James Burns, my great granny, he owned the houses up at the top on this side. And him and John Kelly, the tailors, and Mrs. Callahan and Bear are the only four people in the whole of Henry Street, who actually own the ground rent on their own houses. <coughs> the other people are only renting houses. Now, by 1954, of course, a lot of the ones we're talking about have gone to the Crescent or have gone to you know, other parts of the town and so on, and they have disappeared. And Henry Street is as it is today. Too steep. <laughs> Much quieter than the night they were shooting, the, the, yes. uh, they were kicking the black and tan and destroying the street, yeah. and so on and so forth. My mother um, missed a bullet that day. Did she? That day, whenever yeah. it was yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. She was into the house and right. hit the wall. I hit the wall, yeah. It was, a, it was a great mess. And now, there's a lot of other stories and all about uh, all these sorts of things. It's to start and collect the stories. What? It's a pity somebody doesn't start to and collect, collect all stories. those stories. Now, I'm recorded here, and according to the ones here, I'm going live uh, with this talk. They're going to show my uh, PowerPoint presentations here online with my talk, which I didn't like because I'm not using a script. And I'm afraid, I was afraid of the last day because I told stories about. Yeah. Certain miscomers <laughs> and certain ones, and I'm not sure I want those stories to be broadcast uh, all around the world, but uh, uh, they certainly are that. Now, one thing I'll go to you again, and most of you are possibly would do this the weather's lovely. Yes. Would you get into your car and go out and look at Drum Lake Mill or go out and look at Hills, Hills Mill at Caracas Lane, get your bicycle out and go out and see these places? The one at Corinchico which I didn't put here on this, is well worth seeing because it's my belief that they put the water wheels inside the mills because you can see one of the mill races goes under the building and then the other one, the river, I mean that's a beautiful spot for the river. You all know Corinchico there at the mill. It's beautiful to stand there. Sorry. The one at Corinchico, uh, Kingham's. Stand on the bridge and just listen to the water 